Hello, and welcome to the World Wanderers Podcast, a proud part of the Wander Barn Podcast Network. I'm Ryan. I'm Amanda. And we're your hosts. We're a traveling couple and digital nomads taking you on our adventures as we explore locations, destinations, and careers. Enjoy the show. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to a new episode of The World Wanders. Today, we are talking about Mexican adventures, Mexican cities and destinations, places to visit, and things to do in Mexico with a focus on places that are under the radar. Yeah, and so we're going to start by talking a little bit about places that are on the radar, places that are kind of on the radar, and then dive into our list of under-the-radar cities. But before we dive into that, I think we're just going to start by defining what we mean by this, because obviously everyone is going to have different opinions. Everyone knows of different cities in Mexico. Mexico is a huge country. It's super diverse. There are hundreds of cities here. There are honestly so many places to visit. And, you know, your experience of Mexico might be different than our experience of Mexico than somebody else's experience of Mexico. So we're going to start with some basic defining of how we're categorizing these cities. Yeah, for sure. Obviously, Everyone who's done different travels is going to have a different thought on like, what's on the radar? What's under the radar? Um, our goal here is just to make sure, you know, if you're someone who hasn't traveled a lot in Mexico or you've traveled a decent amount, um, just go through a number of the places we love because something that has really drawn us to Mexico and kept us here over the years is this experience of when we first got here, our list of places we wanted to go and things you wanted to see in Mexico was honestly shorter than it is today after spending, you know, over the course of a number of years, so many months here. Um, we visited so many different places and still have so many more as we spend more time, meet more people, people tell us about new things. And we're like, we want to go check that out. We want to go back to the places we've been before uh, that we love. And so there's so many cool things to do here, which is one of the reasons I think it really is a country that obviously has a massive tourism industry. People from all over the world come to go to the beach in Mexico. Uh, and I think increasingly they're starting to realize this country has so much more to offer than just stunning, amazing beaches. Um, there's 150 million people here. There's incredibly diverse culture, diverse food, uh, everything from mountains to jungle and beach to highland plains. So uh, lots of different stuff to see. And we're going to try to dig, dig into that today. And so for our definition of how we think about what's on the radar, how we think about what's kind of on the radar and how we think about what's under the radar, it's kind of just a general, hey, if we're talking to someone who's been like someone who's maybe been to Mexico City and been to Cabo San Lucas, um, maybe you visited Mexico a couple of times and you've you know gone off the resort and traveled a few places, but not spent a ton of time here. Maybe it's one trip, two trips, three trips. Um, would you know about these places? And so some of these places that are going to be kind of on the radar, or under the radar are gigantic cities, um, but they're places that you might not like if you're talking to someone who's only been to a couple places in Mexico, they're probably not going to recognize the name or maybe they recognize the name, but know nothing about this place. So that's how we're thinking of it. If you're someone who's spent, you know, years traveling in Mexico, you've backpacked around the country, you might think some of these under the radar places are actually kind of on the radar. And uh, to which I would say, you know, that's awesome that you've got such a deep uh, level of understanding about Mexico. Obviously, you know, as two Canadians um, basing ourselves here, we still got a lot of traveling to do and things we want to explore. Um, like I mentioned, our list is always getting bigger for the places we want to go here. But that's kind of how we're thinking about what's on the radar, what's under the radar, uh, and what's kind of in the, the gray area. Yeah, for sure. And then one other thing I want to mention is that Mexico is really famous for its little pueblos, which is like little town, and specifically Pueblos Magicos, which is like a magic little town. And, you know, there are hundreds of those and you know, a lot of them are very, very under the radar. So with this, we tried to think about kind of the bigger areas and bigger spaces uh, in which we could talk about and and not the, the really tiny towns. So that's something else to keep in mind, too, that, you know, if you're uh, not a big city person or you're not a kind of popular destination person or not a beach person and you've kind of heard of all these places, there's still like hundreds of places you could visit in Mexico. So... 
keep that in mind. And then one other thing we've really focused on with the lists that we've made is places that we know a little bit better. So we have a pretty long list of places that we still want to visit. And we really wanted to focus for this on places that we know, places that we know, you know, well, and that type of thing so that we're giving kind of accurate descriptions and stuff of them. So we might have to do a part two to this episode in a couple of years once we've explored more under the radar places. All right, so let's get started with places that are on the radar. Um, these are places that are popular tourist destinations that you've heard about, maybe you've been to. Um, lots of them are still good, and there's a reason they're so popular. But to start it off, Mexico City, of course, the capital of Mexico, one of the biggest cities in the world. If you listen to this podcast, you know how much we love Mexico City. It might be on your radar for things that aren't as pleasant, um, but it truly is an amazing city and definitely something worth visiting. If you've only been to the beach, uh, it's probably the place you want to get started with visiting central Mexico. It's actually kind of funny with Mexico City because I feel like, of course, Mexico City's on people's radar. It's like, you know, one of the biggest cities on the entire planet. So people, of course, know it. But it is kind of one of those cities that I feel like is becoming more on the radar for tourists. Like more and more people are like, hey, I've been to Cancun like four times and maybe I should check out Mexico City or I have a layover. Maybe I should leave the airport. So it's kind of interesting because it's on the radar, but also like for some people, they're just kind of they write it off because it's this like big, you know, big, big city, which, you know, definitely don't write it off. Mexico City is amazing. And um, the next one that's on the radar, and maybe I'll kind of just couple a couple of these together since they're kind of in the same area, would be Cancun, Tulum, and Playa del Carmen. So I think that those are three very on the radar cities that people know about, particularly Cancun. I feel like Cancun to me is, you know, I mean, that was the first place I went to in Mexico in the early 2000s with my family. I feel like it was a very popular beach destination. And then people have kind of spread, you know, down the coast in Quintana Roo and Tulum and Playa del Carmen have become very on the radar for both tourists and nomads. Yeah, absolutely. And kind of each offering a different thing. Tulum's more of like a hipster party place. Playa's got a lot of nomads. Cancun's got parties, beaches. All-inclusive all resorts. That as well. Um, and so another place that's definitely on the radar is Puerto Vallarta, a place we love, a place we spend a lot of time. Um, lots of retirees there, um, lots of you know resorts, great beaches, great weather. Um, so lots of love about Puerto Vallarta, but definitely on the radar. Yeah, and kind of coupled with Puerto Vallarta, I think would be Sayulita. It's kind of funny because I went to Sayulita for the first time in, I think it was like 2009, really early 2009. And it was very much like a sleepy surfer town. And over the last decade, it's very much become, you know, one of these hotspots kind of like Tulum. I feel like we know a lot of people who, when they talk about wanting to go to Mexico, they want to go to Tulum or they want to go to Sayulita. And, you know, for good reason, Sayulita is really cute. It's a little bit, you know, smaller. It's a little bit quieter than a city like Puerto Vallarta. And, you know, it's got great surf if you do like to surf. It's got beautiful beaches, great food. So Sayulita is another one that I think has become very, very popular with tourists and a little bit more kind of like Tulum, like hipster friendly, boho, Instagrammable type place. Yeah. And then a couple more that we'll group together on Pacific beach cities, places you might go to a resort. Um, Cabo San Lucas, of course, very popular. Uh, Mazatlan in Sinaloa kind of seems like maybe not as popular today, but definitely a popular place with retirees, great beaches. Uh, and then Acapulco, another one that seems to have been really popular in the 80s and then maybe faded a bit, but now really coming back. All great beach cities, but you know, definitely places that are on the radar are more known for just going to a resort. Yeah, I think Acapulco is kind of an interesting one because I think it's gone through kind of like waves of tourism and it was, you know, really popular for resorts and tourism. And then it went through a period of time where 
you know, it was known to be quite dangerous with cartels and stuff like that. So it's kind of interesting. I feel like I kind of put it between like maybe on the radar slash kind of on the radar in terms of my own list. We did our list separately. Um, But one other one that I think I'll mention, and, you know, this is not necessarily a top tourist place, but I think this is somewhere that's on the radar and maybe not necessarily for you know, the same reasons as some of these other places, but Tijuana, I think that that's a a city in Mexico that's very, very well known. It's very close to the United States. It's right on the border, very close to San Diego. There's a ton of, you know, trade happening, a ton of people going back and forth between the cities. And I think that that's, you know, a city that's very, very well known in Mexico. And I think, you know, over the years, over the decades, it has had a pretty, you know, rough reputation in terms of violence and crime and cartels. But it seems like Tijuana is really changing quite a bit. And, um, you know, it's got a great food scene and there's there's lots to do from Tijuana. So I think that that's an on the radar city that maybe like Mexico City deserves a little bit more time and credit for people to actually go visit and spend time in. Yeah, and something near to Tijuana that's quite popular, but maybe some people don't know about is the Valle de Guadalupe, which is probably Mexico's like premier wine region Um, and, you know, off the beach, but lots of interesting stuff to do and see there. And so we're going to move from there into the kind of on the radar section. These are places where lots of people know about them, definitely seem to be growing in popularity, um, but all great places to visit as well. Yeah, for sure. So let's start with San Miguel de Allende. We live about an hour from San Miguel de Allende. It's in central Mexico. It's about, you know, three and a half hours north of Mexico City. This is a really popular spot with retirees, especially from Canada and the U.S. I feel like this was one of those cities that when we moved to Mexico for the first time, we heard about pretty quickly. And I think it's gaining popularity super, super fast. It's very popular popular in Mexico. So if you're in Mexico, you'll hear about San Miguel very quick. People will ask you, you know, have you heard of it? Have you been? And I, I but I feel like it's kind of in this middle ground of like, it's certainly not under the radar. It's, it's very busy. It's very popular. And especially with retirees, like I said, but I feel like it kind of hasn't become like quite so mainstream as maybe like Tulum, Sayulita, PV, those types of places. Yeah, but definitely a beautiful place. I know it's popular with retirees, um, lots of people from other places who who call San Miguel home. Um, And yeah, definitely a place that that can be very busy. We went uh, over the holiday break and drove around trying to find a parking spot for, I think, about an hour. So it tells you that it's definitely on the radar for a lot of people. Yeah, for sure. And so the next one on my list is Merida. And I feel like this was a city that when we moved to Mexico City, again, I wasn't super familiar with. Our friend Nathan from Foodie Flashbacker, who you guys recently heard on the podcast, had moved there. We'd moved to Mexico City. He'd moved to Merida. And I was like, what the heck is Merida? Like, where is this city? What is this city? Um, You know, it's pretty popular, though, once you are here. It's one of those cities, again, that a lot of nomads live in. A lot of people go to check out. It's in the Yucatan, on the Yucatan Peninsula. It's not far from Cancun. And it has an amazing, you know, food scene, cenotes, lots of ruins around it. So really great place that we definitely recommend that you add to your list if it's not already on it. Yeah, it's definitely, I think, more common for Mexican, like, domestic tourism. I think there's quite a bit of tourism from Mexico. But as far as international tourism, doesn't seem to be quite there yet, where maybe people will stop through while they're doing kind of a tour of some of the other stuff in the Yucatan. It's relatively close to um, Chichen Itza, like you mentioned. Um, But because it's inland, I think a lot of people maybe don't think about it when they're planning trips to that part of of the country but definitely a cool city uh, and then another I'll, I'll actually lump these these next two kind of on the radar places together because in a certain sense they're very much on the radar you've probably heard the names of both of these cities before but as far as kind of travel goes I'd, I'd say they're you know they're kind of a little bit under the radar and and th- that would be Monterrey uh, and Guadalajara which are I think the second and third biggest city uh, in Mexico. Monterrey, of course, is in the north, the capital of Nuevo León. Um, Guadalajara is the capital of Jalisco State. Two very big cities, very kind of well-known for like business uh, and that type of thing. But places we've both gone to um, that we have, you know, 
not many of our traveler friends who've traveled in Mexico make the time to go to, uh, but but both full of great food, interesting cultural stuff, um, some really cool stuff uh, around these cities. So Guadalajara is near Lake Chapala, which is I think is one of the biggest lakes in Mexico. Um, and Ajijic is a really popular community, uh, Pueblo Mágico now um, near there. And then Monterrey is in the north. It's in the mountains. You can do some really cool adventures and, and outdoor hiking and stuff. So those are two cities which definitely worth visiting, although not many people talk about them uh, on the tourist side of things. Yeah, I think it's really funny because Guadalajara has like, I think, maybe like six million, a population of like six million, including kind of the you know, the metro area and stuff like that. So it feels weird to put a city that's, you know, as big as like Canada's biggest city on a kind of on the radar. But I do feel like, you know, people have heard of these. Maybe they kind of know of them, but they've never really been on their radar for travel. And they're kind of like, you know, if I could go to Puerto Vallarta or I could go to Mazatlan or I could go to Playa del Carmen, you know, why would I go to these places? And we spent quite a bit of time in Guadalajara, less in Monterrey, but both are really great. Like if you like cities, if you like culture, if you like checking out kind of, you know, the differences between different cities with their industries and that type of thing, I think that these are two really interesting cities. You know, Monterrey is not far from the U.S. border, so you get a little bit more of like the American influence, which is really interesting to see. And you you get it with like the big interstates and stuff like that. We found Monterey to be a very, very interesting city to visit. Yeah. And then I mentioned Ajijic being near Guadalajara. Um, also, even more famously, Tequila, um, the city where tequila is made, um, is about an hour away from Guadalajara. You can take a train there. So another great reason to check um, that part of the country out. And so moving on from there, this is one that I actually thought about putting as an on the radar place. Um, It's both a a state, but we're talking specifically about the city of Oaxaca. Yeah, I think Oaxaca is a really interesting one because I think a couple years ago, it was definitely kind of on the radar. But I think that I'm hearing more and more people talk about Oaxaca, want to go to Oaxaca. You know, there's a lot of people coming to Mexico right now, uh, obviously with the ongoing pandemic and Mexico being very easy to get to, especially from countries like Canada and the US. You know, there's a lot of people visiting and I think there's a lot of people looking for places that are more affordable to visit than maybe some of these beach towns that are really well known. And Oaxaca seems to be one that's becoming more and more on people's radar. But Oaxaca is amazing. It's really known for, you know, its festivals, its colors, its food. They make mezcal in that region. And they have a fabulous Dia de los Muertos celebration. So that's a really popular reason for people to come down. And, you know, lots of things to offer in Oaxaca. And I think in a lot of ways, when you kind of think about like the movie Coco or you think about you know, Mexican women and their colorful traditional dresses or traditional Mexican food, what you're thinking about are things that come from Oaxaca. And Oaxaca is an incredible state with lots to offer. And Oaxaca City, of course, is a really great city to visit. Yeah. And a place that's also become quite popular for nomads to base themselves, um, like you said, because there's so much interesting cultural stuff and lots to see and do around there. Um, So yeah, definitely a popular city, definitely worth visiting. um, And one of those things where as you start getting like away from the coast and into central Mexico, Oaxaca City can be a really amazing place to visit. And so you've got a couple on your kind of on the radar list. Um, I, we talked about Acapulco. You have it on your kind of on the radar. Uh, we, we put it into on the radar. Another city, a big city in Mexico that's kind of under the radar when it comes to traveling if you're not Mexican uh, is Puebla. Puebla is, so people know about Cinco de Mayo in um, the States in Canada. It's kind of misinterpreted as like a Mexican national day. Uh, it's actually the um, celebration of the victory of the Battle of Puebla. Um, and so that's kind of what Puebla is famous for, but also incredible food, lots of great food that we think of as Mexican food, um, has like its roots in Puebla, uh, lots of history, lots of interesting stuff to do and very close to Mexico city, only about, I think it was an hour and a half, two hours on a bus. 
Yeah. And this is becoming a place that more and more people are basing themselves in, especially families. I'm seeing consistently in a lot of the Facebook groups, especially expat expat Facebook groups that we're in, that there's lots of people living in Puebla. It's, you know, a bit smaller than Mexico City, but still really close. It's got an international airport. You know, the air quality is a little bit better. You know, weather is pretty similar, so it's pretty temperate. So Puebla is is a great place. And honestly, somewhere I'd like to spend a little bit more time in. Um, and then the last place that was on this list, which is kind of an interesting one and, you know, maybe is not as much on the radar considering the other places we've put, but Manzanillo. Manzanillo is in the state of Colima on the Pacific coast, and it had a pretty booming tourist industry in the 80s and then became you know, more known for like a port city. But I think it's one of those places that if you're looking for, you know, a beach destination or an all-inclusive destination, it's going to pop up probably maybe let's say like right behind sort of Mazatlan, you'll get Manzanillo. And uh, so I think people have kind of heard of Manzanillo, but maybe not been there, not really sure what it's all about. And, you know, it's a pretty nice beast beach destination. Like the stretch of beach there is absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, absolutely. A place where I didn't know a ton about, but when we went, I was definitely just uh, impressed by the geographic setting of it. And so let's move into the under the radar section, the the kind of thing we've been aiming towards. One of the things that kind of these places have in common, these are some of our favorite places to be, to visit, to do things in Mexico. All Some of them becoming kind of increasingly and quickly more popular. Some of these are maybe a bit more popular and definitely on the radar when it comes to like Mexican domestic tourism, but as far as internationals, um, not as much. And so the first one on the list is San Cristobal de las Casas, which is um, not the capital of Chiapas state, Chiapas being the one that borders Guatemala in the south of Mexico, but definitely the most popular when it comes to that region of the country uh, as far as tourism goes. Uh, It's a smaller city uh, in the I don't know if you in the mountains, essentially. So you're at quite a high elevation. You get some pretty cool temperatures. We've got an episode on it here. But yeah, just a really cool city, interesting culture, almost some of the things that kind of remind you more of traveling in Peru or traveling in some of the Andes, where this this kind of Spanish, but it's also cold and it's in the mountains. Um, and it's really a great base for lots of interesting cultural things, but also for some incredible natural travels. So around there, there's incredible waterfalls, there's uh, ruins, there's all sorts of interesting stuff to do. And so it's a place where I think a lot of you probably heard about it, um, less so in terms of how many people have actually gone, how many people have actually traveled, and very close to the Sumidero Canyon, which is one of the most incredible natural um tourist uh, sites in Mexico and definitely worth a visit. So any thoughts you want to add about San Cristobal? I think just if you're looking for places that are kind of maybe like off the beaten path where you can do some really cool stuff in nature, but also be in you know, a a small city that offers a lot of culture. I think San Cristobal is a really, really awesome option and just Chiapas in general. And I think Chiapas is, you know, one of the states in Mexico that's less popular. Um, It's a bit of a poorer state. It's, like you said, in the south of Mexico, borders Guatemala. And really, like, I don't hear a lot of people talking about Chiapas or talking about San Cristobal outside of our friends who have been in Mexico for a while. And even for us, we just visited last year, so early parts of 2021. So it kind of took us like living here for like four winters before we even got ourselves to Chiapas. And I kind of wish we hadn't waited that long. And I kind of wish we would have had more time while we were there because it's pretty, pretty amazing area. Yeah. And so the next one on the list is a city that I think if we do this again in six to 12 months, we're going to have a tough time saying it's under the radar, um, but that's Puerto Escondido, which is in Oaxaca State. Uh, it's a small surf beach town um, on the Pacific coast of Mexico, a place we went a few years ago. And even just talking to friends who have gone more recently uh, is growing quite quickly, but just incredible geographic spot, beautiful weather, um, beautiful beaches and really interesting kind of vibe as it's developing. 
Yeah, absolutely. We kind of debated back and forth. Is this under the radar anymore? Because like Ryan said, it's growing really fast. We went in early 2019 for my 30th birthday. So, you know, three years ago. And there was just a couple of restaurants in the area we stayed in. And it was very much like a dirt road. And, you know, the hotel we stayed at didn't have good internet. There was basically no Airbnbs to stay at. You know, it was very much like you're going to a beach town and you're enjoying a beach that's not super busy. And our understanding of Puerto Escondido was, you know, there's a season where the waves get quite big and it brings in a ton of surfers. And other than that, it's kind of, you know, a sleep beach town. But as you know, like we've talked about more and more people are looking for places that aren't the beaches of Cancun, Tulum, Playa del Carmen, PV, Puerto Escondido is getting more and more discovered. And I think that Ryan's right, like next, certainly within a year, I think that this is going to be bumped to at least kind of on the radar because it's getting popular quickly. So if you like beach towns that are a little bit more raw and a little bit less developed, I would definitely get to Puerto Escondido soon. And the thing that's cool about Puerto Escondido is even now, if it feels a little bit too developed, too busy for you, it's really close to a ton of other little beach towns that are certainly much more off the radar, you know, Mazunte and other places like that. And you can get to those quite easily from Puerto Escondido. Yeah. And so the next one on the list um, is a city that I really love, uh, which is Guanajuato. And I think this is one of those ones where if you talk to someone from Mexico, they're going to know about Guanajuato, like they visited. Um, But people who aren't from Mexico, I think it's kind of gets bumped down that list. Um, But it is truly an awesome, very unique, very interesting city with a lot of historical significance. And I think people say it's, you know, one of the most colorful cities um, in Mexico and definitely one of the most beautiful. It's, you know, built kind of in and around mountains and they've repurposed old mining tunnels to serve as the roads. And so as you're walking around, you feel like you're walking kind of through, you know, an old medieval style European city where the roads turn into staircases and some of the, you know, they get progressively narrower. Some of the alleys are maybe the size, you know, of your shoulders. Uh, You have to turn sideways to go through them. Uh, Also a city that's just full of life. It's a a university city. So there's lots of nightlife, lots of events, lots of culture going on. And when you just walk around, you always feel like the buzz, the energy um, of the city, a place that definitely does get busy with tourists, but tends to be mostly domestic tourism and less international tourism, but definitely a place worth visiting. And one of those places that often gets compared to San Miguel um, because they are relatively close. Um, And I think both of us really kind of lean towards Guanajuato as just having like more character um, and interesting stuff uh, to check out and see. Yeah, for sure. I would agree with that. We've been to Guanajuato twice. I'm excited to go back. It's definitely a city that I feel like I I won't tire of, you know, anytime soon. And I think for me, it's like, Guanajuato feels really busy with local tourism, you know, domestic tourism, lots of Mexican tourism versus San Miguel de Allende feels very full of (laughs) retired Americans and Canadians, which is not often what we're looking for. So I think there's just a difference. And I think that, you know, if you're looking for a retiree spot or you're looking for a spot where people speak more English and you're going to see, you know, hear more familiar accents and that type of thing, San Miguel might be the place for you. And if you're looking for, you know, more of a cultural immersion in a, a city full of lots of young people and life and colors, I think Guanajuato is a, a really great option. All right. So kind of Working towards the end of our list here, the next one we're going to touch on is Campeche. So Campeche is the name of the state and it's the name of the capital city. Definitely a small city. I think maybe 100,000 people live there. And we went there at the start of 2020. We were there for New Year's. 2021. 2021. Um, And yeah, just another kind of city right on the coast. It's on the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, In the actual city, there's no beaches. You have to kind of travel a little bit further out to get that. Um, But it's a city that's kind of got an interesting historical downtown. uh, And then as well, close to lots of interesting ruins within Campeche State. I think if you're looking at Quintana Roo and Yucatan, some of those uh, older 
uh, ruins are so busy and kind of you go and there's a giant line. Uh, we went to a couple in Campeche where you show up and you're the only people there uh, other than the people working there. Um, so definitely a cool place to visit for that and, and definitely a place that I think is under the radar and um, definitely worth checking out because it's got some yeah amazing history, some good food, um, beautiful nature, um, and lots going for it. Yeah, absolutely. And I honestly think if Campeche had a beach within the city and you didn't have to like leave the city of Campeche to be able to go to the beach, I think it would probably be on more people's radar. But yeah, we were there for, you know, maybe a week, maybe a little bit less than that around New Year's last year. So end of 2020, start of 2021 and really enjoyed it. And I definitely think it's somewhere that is worth checking out, especially if you are, again, looking for places that are a little bit less touristic. And, you know, it's like Ryan said, on the Gulf of Mexico. So very beautiful ocean. They've got a very beautiful boardwalk that you can walk on for ages. And I think it's a a pretty cute little city. Yeah, absolutely. And so moving to the last one on the list, um, the place where we currently are, it's kind of funny to say that a city of a a million and a half people, um, maybe even more than that, could be under the radar. But kind of using that test of when we tell people the name of the city, most of the time we get like a blank look, obviously not Mexican people, but people who have traveled lots in Mexico don't know about it. And that's Queretaro. So uh, it's the cap. It's Santiago de Queretaro is the name of the city. Queretaro is the name of the state. Um, uh, interesting city to the northeast of Mexico City, northwest of Mexico City, um, where we're currently basing ourselves. And I think one of those cities where it has a lot of kind of the history, really interesting culture that has, you know, that, that makes Mexico such an amazing place to travel. And it's also a really cool hub to see the area. So like we've mentioned, it's very close to San Miguel. It's also close to um, Bernal, which is a Pueblo Mexico, a very... Um, kind of iconic view that you'll see of Mexico, um, the Piedra de Peña de Bernal, um, which is close to here. Also close to lots of wine and cheese makers, Tequisquiapan, which is another Pueblo Mágico, uh, and kind of only a few hours away from getting into the mountains. Um, we've talked a bit about why we're here and why we like living here, but definitely a place that I think is worth visiting and isn't included on a lot of itineraries, um, but definitely checking out this part of Mexico um, is something that's under the radar for most international tourists, but definitely worth doing. Yeah, for sure. It's kind of funny because when we moved to Mexico City, we found out about San Miguel de Ende. And so we went there for Christmas of, I think, I guess it would have been 2017. And we drove through Querétaro on our bus. And I remember being like, oh, this is like a pretty sizable city that we're going through here. Like, what is this city? And like looking at it and being like, I don't have any idea what the city is. I've never heard of it before. I wonder what's even here. And then our friend Becky, uh, Gillespie, who you've heard on the podcast a number of times, was basing herself here last year and convinced us to come visit. And we were like, wow, this city is really livable. And so not only is it close to a lot of really amazing tourist destinations, like Ryan mentioned, and a lot of you know nature, wine and cheese, et cetera, et cetera. But Yeah, it's a super, super livable city. We've been here for a couple of months now and we're really loving being here. So I think we're definitely going to be here a little bit longer, calling this place home for for a little while longer at least. And definitely somewhere that I would recommend adding to your list. Yeah, and then just to quickly wrap things up, we'll throw a few honorable mentions in there. So one for me was Tepotzlan, which is just south. It's in um, the state bordering uh, Mexico City. And so it's kind of an artistic city, a place where you can do lots of hiking um, and kind of a cool smaller place that most people do day trips from Mexico City towards. Um, but you can also go stay and, and you know, lots of interesting stuff going on there. Yeah, another one I'll throw in there that we really liked is Valladolid, and that is really close to Merida. It's just about an hour east. And I think that the reason that people would maybe go through here or stay here would be if they had rented a car and wanted to get to Chichen Itza quite early. It's very, very close to Chichen Itza and also, you know, very close to some of the more popular cenotes. So I think that that's often why people go. But you know, the town itself is super, super cute. It's got some really great restaurants, some a really great food scene. And I think that although it's quite small, um, I think that if you like, you know, smaller places, this might be a great place to spend a bit of time. 
Yeah, another one is a place that we visited in uh, 2020, at the fall end of 2020, uh, which is Barra de Navidad, um, which is technically in Jalisco, very close to Manzanillo, though. Um, interesting uh, beachy town um, with kind of a cool uh, port lagoon thing going on. So another cool city that not many people talk about. I mean, we barely even heard about it um, before we'd gone. Um, that that's worth checking out. And then uh, I think one more I'd throw in would be La Paz in Baja, which not a lot of people know about. Cabo gets all the shine, but another kind of cool, interesting city um, in Baja, California. Yeah. So I mean, we could continue doing this pretty well all day because, like I said at the beginning of this episode, there are literally hundreds of cities in this country. Um, but this kind of wraps up the list that we've made based on places that we've heard of and places that we've been. If you have some other cool under the radar cities that you really like, uh, definitely shoot us a message. We'd love to hear them so we can add them to our list if we haven't heard of them before. And yeah, I think that that covers everything for today. Yeah. Until next time. Thanks so much for listening and we'll see you soon. Bye. Thanks for listening to this episode. If you want more, make sure to check out the World Wanderers Insider, available on Patreon at patreon.com slash theworldwanderers. For show notes, head over to theworldwanderers.com. Find us on social media at the World Wanderers Podcast and join the private Facebook community at World Wanderers, a community for travelers. You can always get in touch with us at info at theworldwanderers.com. And if you enjoyed the show, don't forget to subscribe and leave a review. It really helps us find new listeners. See you next time.